Hello folks, welcome back to World War II TV and another impromptu book review show. I was just putting some books away after RAF week and I had had some emails from people and some messages on social media about recommendations for Battle of Britain books. I thought, well, hey, I'll jump on and give you a few of them. So be very quick this video, but I'll take you through some of my favourites uh, with the caveat that I'm not an aviation Battle of Britain specialist. I'm more Normandy, Battle of the Bold, things like that. But I've got, of course, uh, a few titles. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. One of the books that set me on my path to becoming who I am today, a World War II historian, whatever you want to call me. And it's Len Dayton's book, Battle of Britain. This came out in 1980, and I had it shortly after that. I've had this, this very copy for about 40 years. And at the time, it was it was amazing. I mean, imagine as a 14-year-old boy, images such as as this, which was the whole schematic of how the Royal Air Force defended Britain, how the Luftwaffe sent over its people was 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 amazing. And I mean to do that, press the button again. This one here of the attack on an airfield by Luf, uh, Luftwaffe fighters. So it's of its time. It's 40 years old, um, but it went through in basic terms who the protagonists were, how the battle unfolded day by day, some of the key figures, some of the key aircraft, how the Observer Corps worked, how the home defense chain worked, et cetera, et cetera. By today's standards, it would be considered very conventional in its view of the war. It was written 40 years, as I say, after the conflict. Most of the people who fought through the Battle of Britain survived were still alive reading it. People like Adolf Galland and the fighter races were reading it. But it's worthwhile having, even though it's now 40 years old, because it's the historiography. It gives you an idea of where we were in our thinking 40 years about the Battle of Britain. Very little um, room for nuance back then, okay? So the Battle of Britain was just something to be celebrated, and we didn't look at it contextually. We didn't look at it in much detail beyond that. But Len Dayton, he, of course, we don't know who Len Dayton is. He wrote the Ipcrest, Ipcrest File. He was a journalist and a novelist, did all sorts of things, and um, TV shows, radio shows. But Len Dayton, Battle of Britain, is my first recommendation, with the caveat that it is of its age. My second book is also a little bit old, uh, but not that old. The Finest Hour by uh, one of the guests is Phil Craig. Phil Craig, of authors is Phil Craig. He's been a guest on World War II. Tim Clayton's the other. And it was the book that accompanied a TV show called The Finest Hour. So it's the voices of those who were there. Um, not just the air crews, not just of those in the Royal Air Force, the Observer Corps, the civilians, people who are victims of the Brits, people from both sides, children, uh, adults, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And although it doesn't necessarily have much of a narrative drawing those accounts together, although it does, it's more just so you can hear the um, the voices of those people. Um, yes, according to uh, looking at the, the questions coming, I expect these books will be available in public libraries. So finest hour, it's the voices of those who were there. So I think it's a really good start. If you want to kind of understand how people felt about it at the time, because it's, you know, what, what their feelings were about the Battle of Britain. You know, we've got to remember that at the time, as the battle was raging, the fear of a German invasion was very real. The fear of, of, of defeat was very real. We now know that the, the German invasion of Britain was, was highly unlikely. The Navy, our Navy, the Royal Navy was going to come down and stop them. And, you know, but at the time, it's very much uh, what people who were there thought at the time. So Finest Hour, Tim Clayton, Phil Gregg, Craig is my second book. Third book, um, Dilip Sarkar. And I unashamedly, some of these people who I'm recommending are friends of me, mine, they're friends of World War II TV. But hey, what, what can you do? I, I can't help knowing some of these people. Um, you can't include a, a book review show about the Battle of Britain without including at least one book by Dilip Sarkar, MBE. Dilip has been on the show several times. He's written a whole series of books about the Battle of Britain, including he's in the middle of writing a seven volume kind of not going to be definitive, but it's going to be his probable last statement about the Battle of Britain. He's written about individuals like Sailor Malan. He's written about um, uh, wings, particular battles. The way, the reason I selected this one to, 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 to recommend to you guys is it's those who didn't make it. The, the Battle of Britain victims who died during that summer, 1940, and didn't, didn't live to tell the tale. Because I think as a kid, when I was growing up, I learned the Battle of Britain through the eyes of those who survived. We had people like Douglas Bader and Johnny Johnson, and even Adolf Galland, the German. They seemed to be on TV all the time when I was a kid. And we had this idea that because it was a victory for the for the for the British and the Commonwealth and all the other countries that, that, that took to the air to defend Britain's skies, I think we saw it 
through the ideas, through this this notion of 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 the Germans being defeated. But of course, lots of pilots died on both sides. Lots of air crews, British air crews, Commonwealth air crews, Poles and Czechs and and French and and Belgian and British pilots, Australian, Canadian, Zealand pilots died. So Dilip, like it did with the uh, 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 his Arnhem book, takes us through the stories of some of those who didn't make it. So they are casualties of the Battle of Britain. So there we are, Battle of Britain, 1940, the finest hours, human cost. And frankly, Dilip Sarkar, any of his books are worth getting. Although, of course, with the breadth of what he's written about, there is some overlap in that, for example, a book about one of the individual pilots will also include some of the things covered in more in the, the, the more the broader books that talk about the campaign. And his big new series of books will kind of have uh, we'll be going over some of the areas he's got he's done before but that's that's the nature of the beast he's written prolifically any of them are worth getting but that's the one i'm recommending battle of britain 1940 the finest hours human cost dilip sarkar next one bringing things more up to date is james holland's book on the battle of britain now as you know james holland very popular he's been on uh world war ii tv he runs of course we have ways the incredible uh, podcast with himself and Al Murray and his book it's a big one and it's much more of a modern narrative so it takes you through um, the events from as you can see there from May to October 1940 and in typical James Holland style you have maybe 15 20 different people you follow their stories primarily through the account so you hear some of the, the, the their voices at the beginning of the of the battle at the end of the battle what they were thinking and then of course it has his interpretation of how the battle was unfolding the decisions that were being made the tactics that being used and it has as it, any james holland book does a very readable easy style to follow of course because it's james holland he does insert his own feelings and opinions about how the battle was was unfolded and what things either side could have done that means some some of you who are familiar with the battle you may disagree with some of the things he said you may agree with other things he said it's 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 a historian's interpretation of the battle so it tells the facts but it also gives offers his opinion on how things could have gone and maybe decisions that should have been made. But it's a really good, I'm not going to say a starting point, but it's a big, a big one. If, but if you if you want a more up-to-date version of the Battle of Britain, although I think it's about 10 years old, Battle of Britain, um, it's a good one to, 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 to turn to in, in typical James Holland style. Um, I'm not going to include a book about the Spitfire. Um, obviously, the Spitfire is covered in, in lots of these books I've just mentioned, Len Dayton's book, James Holland's book. Um, because everyone knows about the Spitfire, you can go into any bookshop in the UK, USA, and there's always books available on the Spitfire. Um, let's talk about the Hurricane. Um, this book by Adrian Stewart, which is also a fairly old one. I think it's 30 or 40 years old. This just happens to be a paperback edition I, I, I picked up fairly recently. Um, it's not just in the Battle of Britain. It talks about the Hurricane throughout World War II. And I, there was a debate. One of the reasons I was prompted to do this um, this video today is there's a debate on, on the comments section of one of the videos from last week about the Spitfire, the Hurricane, and which was better, which was worse. And it's one of those ongoing debates. Everyone has an opinion. But, of course, you can look at the hit, uh, the, the Hurricane in, perhaps in 1940, and it's a different aircraft than it was in 1942. The, it, its Battle of Britain role was different to its role later as a tank buster. The Spitfire in 1940 is a very different animal to the Spitfire of 44, 45. The, it, the Spitfire was used in all sorts of roles. But the Hurricane is underappreciated, although there are people saying it's not underappreciated now because lots of people do realize it's a very important aircraft. So if I talk about the Hurricane, you kind of can't win. Some people will say it's talked about too much because others will say it's not talked about enough. But, and as James Jeffries would say, it's not just the Spitfire and the Hurricane. Many other aircraft were involved, the Bolton, Paul Defiat, the Blenheim, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Battle of Britain wasn't just a fighter battle. It was Coast, Coastal Command. It was Bomber Command. It was the Royal Observer Corps. It was the home network that was defending Britain's shores. And the Luftwaffe were, were also using more than just one aircraft. It wasn't just Messerschmitts. It was the Dorniers and the Heinkels coming over. But that book there about the Hurricane, I found it a particularly cool read. And I, I rip, ripped through it in a, in, a, in a two or three days. Now, finally, my final book, because I told you it would be a quick show today. It's important these days to put the Battle of Britain into the context of what was happening globally, what was happening with Britain's in, uh, vision of the war, what was happening politically, how was Churchill thinking, what was going on with regards to Chamberlain, who'd been involved earlier, etc., etc. What did the British people think? And of course, um, to understand that aspect, I'm going to turn to another friend, Alan Allport, who's a, a, a Brit like me, but 
uh, and like me, he lives overseas. I live in France. He lives in the USA where he teaches at Syracuse. And um, Britain at Bay, the epic story of the Second World War, 1938 to 1941, is the first of Alan's books about the World War. He's currently in the middle of the next one. And I was talking to him about it back in, in, in March or, or April. One, one of those months, I can't remember when. So this is a very good modern interpretation. Some people would say it's revisionist, and I do not believe revisionist is a dirty word. Revisionist means fresh. It means new analysis. It looks at the British class system. It looks at where the British um, um, ambitions were. It looks at empire. It looks at the, you know, it's not, it's about Britain, but it's about Britain in as part of a global community. Where does it sit with the Commonwealth? Where does it sit with um, the, 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 what the enemy are wanting, what the allies are wanting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, another one, I, I, I toyed between this one and Daniel Todman's book uh, about the same period, 1939 to 41. Um, they're both very good. In fact, there's a bit of overlap between them because I've only met Dan Todman once for about five minutes. I, I don't know him as well as I know Alan. Alan and I have shared a few beers. I thought, well, hey, I'll, I'll actually recommend Alan's one. He's a cool, cool guy, even though he does support. Liverpool, um, uh, which, you know, no one can hold that against him. So that is a much better book to understand where Britain was in 1940, where um, the, the the battle fits into the grander campaign, how Britain had been drawn into the war, what was going on in 1930s, that there was a kind of um, a realisation amongst some people that war was going to happen. Other people had their heads buried in the sand and believed that a war wasn't going to happen. There are various interpretations of what Germany might do and what Britain should do in response. It's France's role, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I thoroughly recommend, um, as I say, there, Britain at bay, the epic story of the Second World War, 1938 to 1941. Um, don't be thinking that much of the book is about the Battle of Britain, maybe, maybe a, a tenth of it, a twelfth of it, something like that. But it is definitely covered in there. But it's covered in there contextually as part of the greater war in the early part of uh, the, 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 those war years. So there we are. Um, there's a few comments the comments there saying the Hurricane was the more versatile aircraft of the, tour, of the two. That's the Great Dominion. I'm I mean almost the other way. I think the Hurricane did a few things really well, whereas the Spitfire was more of an all-rounder but didn't do any of them exceptionally well. But people will disagree with me because everybody's got their their favorite aircraft and their and their and, and they don't often want to shift their ideas on things. But I thought I'd give you that. Um, if you disagree with my uh, interpretations of the, of the best books about the Battle of Britain or you've got other suggestions, put them in the comments below. Uh, it helps um, push the channel on. The more interaction, the more comments brings people to the channel. If you have just found this and, and have, have decided to watch this video because it's only going to be 15, 16 minutes long, then perhaps dive into one of our longer shows. The usual show length on World War II TV is about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half. Historians come on and we talk about World War II for that length of time. And we'll dive into all sorts of uh, arenas of combat, all sorts of subjects, from the resistance to the strategic bombing campaign, to the Pacific campaign, to the jungles of Burma, to the deserts of North Africa, et cetera, et cetera. Next week, we are starting our artillery week and the shows are already listed there. And then we have many more things coming your way. Again, remind people, if you'd like to support the channel, there are numerous ways you can do so. You can, uh, after this show has, has processed, you can use the thanks button to give me like a buy me a coffee. That's the way they call it. You can give a, a donation. That way you can become a patron or you can become a channel member and you can just spread the word about what we're doing to your friends and other people who you know are interested in World War II. If some of them aren't your friends, uh, then you can recommend to them just as well. So there we are. This is Paul Woodadge. I, I'm sitting here on a Saturday afternoon. Normally, if in the, in the other times of year, I'd be watching football right now, but it's it's in the close season. There's no football on. So I was twiddling my thumbs. I thought I'd do this. So there we are. Woody's Battle of Britain recommendations. If you disagree with my choices, put them in the comments below. Thanks, everybody, and have a good rest of the weekend. I'll see you all on Monday. And don't forget Monday's show, by the way, slightly earlier time. Uh, 5 p.m. UK time because uh, I've got to go to an event in Bayer later that day. So it's a bit early. The rest of the shows, I think, are normally as they should be at 7 p.m. UK time. But I'll see you all then. Cheers, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye.